soar on to Capernaum. If you visit here, you'll be immediately informed that this is the town of Jesus, though Capernaum in Hebrew means the village of Nahum, not the prophet, probably named for a contented fisherman. The ancient synagogue still stands amid the ruins of ancient houses. Matthew tells us Jesus lived here and made it the base for his ministry. It was a fishing village with a population of around 1,500 and the home of the fishermen, Peter, Andrew, James and John. Matthew, who also lived here, writes about it in his Gospel. Now when Jesus heard that John the Baptist had been put in prison, he departed to Galilee, and leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is by the sea. Archaeological artifacts litter the site, what remains of houses and maybe civic buildings. Even intricate sculpted designs and columns. Household vessels. Even Corinthian columns with Jewish images. This artifact believed to depict the cart that carried the Ark of the Covenant. This column, paid for by Alpheus, the son of Zebedee, the son of John. Excavations have revealed two ancient synagogues built one over the other. The first probably here when Jesus lived here. Around the year 129, Roman Emperor Hadrian renamed Israel Palestine after the Philistines who were the enemies of the Jews. And later with the growth of Christianity, many churches were built here. The synagogue was an important part of life clearly an imposing building. Stone benches were set along the eastern and western aisles. Luke 7 in the Bible tells us that on one occasion when Jesus entered Capernaum, that a centurion's servant was sick and ready to die. The people begged Jesus to come, saying that the one for whom he should do this was deserving for he loves our nation and has built us a synagogue. That synagogue was replaced by this one. Nearby are the ruins of the houses, one of which was turned into a church by the Byzantines and is believed to have been built over the home of Peter. To this day, the places where homes were and the alleys between them can clearly be seen, right next to the lake where the disciples fished, where Jesus walked, where he lived, and where many miracles were done. So Peter's house, where the paralyzed man was let down through the roof, now has a building built over the site. I have to say, I felt the modern building ruined the ruins. If ruins can be ruined, that is. It was much better without it. Underneath is the octagonal Byzantine church. But it's time to move on.